can you hear me? Earth Mom! Earth Mom! A young boy and his mother. Looking on, oh, Dad's got on his Easter tie. Looks nice. a husband and father right there. Then, you had me a present every single day. And now, Laurel, amazingly, she had these, each day he would get a little note and a stuffed animal or something. She left all of that here for him? And then each day I would put it there so he would find it in the morning. I mean, it was incredible the amount of prep that that took. Priceless memories and on the screen, precious reminders. Well, I saw Mount Fuji, that's in Japan. I got to see Lake Michigan, which is where uh, Racine is in Milwaukee. Some of the sites Racine native Dr. Laurel Clark saw on her first trip to space. There were some magical pictures of her in space. Every one was just this, this uh, effervescent smile. And she also took pictures of everybody that she knew, including her family members and obviously uh, Ian, and would take a picture so that you could see space in the background of it. At his home near Houston, John Clark shared these videos with 12 no. News, documenting some of the Clark family's final conversations. Well, I love you both. Me too. Well, we love you too. Unaware of what would come days later. What do you remember about that day, February 1st, 2003? Um, you know, it's etched immeasurably in my mind. That day, John, a doctor and flight surgeon with NASA at the time, eight-year-old Ian and the Columbia families waited in Florida for the shuttle's return. It never arrived, breaking apart over Texas. Horrific, if you can imagine. The sense of uh, despair and uh, sorrow and grief. The astronauts left behind children and spouses. And Laurel's funeral was March 10th ironically her birthday. Over the next year, funerals, remembrances, and the one year anniversary. Did you have a chance to, to grieve in that year? Well, I mean, I just cried constantly. During it all, parenting through the pain. She was 100% the primary caregiver in Ian's first, you know, his formative eight years while she was around. And then when she left, I'm like, wow. I have no idea what I'm doing. Did it bring the two of you closer? Oh, yeah. After she passed? Yeah, absolutely. Out of loss came discovery as a father and a person. I can't tell you how in her death and her sacrifice that I became a different and better person. I'm not sure it would have happened either had I not had this cataclysmic event to have to deal with. Do you wish that would have happened earlier so she could see that? I think she did see it. And, you know, uh, in her, her, her own way, she's probably going, yeah, you know, you finally got something right there. As the 20th anniversary approached, Clark returned to Johnson Space Center in Houston for NASA's annual Day of Remembrance a ceremony honoring those lost in the line of duty, including the Apollo 1 and Shuttle's Challenger and Columbia crews. This park is known as the Astronaut Tree Grove. Trees are planted in memory of fallen astronauts, including those who died in the line of duty. Family representatives stop at each oak tree for Apollo, Challenger, and Columbia, placing flowers on the plaque bearing each astronaut's name. Clark places the first rose on his wife's tree. You have to turn tragedy into triumph. You have to find a way to make something that is painful into something that is memorable in a, a positive sense. Finding light after darkness, and not the only change for this family. I think it's cool. It's really Ooh. cool. The young boy we saw in Racine in the summer of 2003, splashing in the fountain dedicated to his mom, is now grown up with a child of his own. So you have a granddaughter now. Yeah. Her name is Laurel. Yeah, she definitely has Laurel's passion and uh, she's feisty and she loves swimming and she's a you know real outdoor and she, but she's also a girly girl and Laurel was this weird you know woman in the military on submarines and flying in, in uh, military aircraft and doing all this stuff but she was also a girly girl and she was also very social and definitely little oral has that social bug it's unfortunate that they didn't physically meet but they've connected somehow in the, you know the alternate universe
And while we didn't get a chance to speak with Ian, John tells me that he's been to Wisconsin with Ian over the years, and John is looking forward to bringing Laurel here so she can learn more about where her grandmother is from.